prepare yourself for this kind of situation because it is a part of free riding and we're all responsible for each other. In terms of avalanche rescue, there's on one side the theory which you practice when you go with your friends in the Transiva Park or in the garden, but then there is the reality. When an avalanche happens, it goes without saying that the emotions are so intense that your common sense goes out the window, and even more so when a group. It is called panic and it's really important to control it and avoid it as much as possible. So here are the few steps that I would focus on when dealing with an avalanche. So first to do is to fix the victim as much as possible until the avalanche stops and remember what is the last scene point because that's where your rescue is going to start. So at this point, if you have an emergency beacon, just pull it because it will inform the rescue that there's been an accident, that there's an avalanche and they will know exactly the position and they'll start getting ready. At this point, one person needs to take the lead and build up a strategy and organize everyone so that there's only one plan going. It's important to call the rescue to make sure they've had the signal from the emergency beacon and to know that they're underway and that they know how many people and what's happening with the accident. The more information the rescue have, the better. So first thing to do, everybody in search mode. So that all the signals that you're going to be looking for are going to be victims and not searchers. One super important point when you start searching is to check out if there is still danger above and then act and plan your strategy accordingly. It's really important to know that when a victim is trapped into an avalanche, in the first 15 minutes, uh, she will have 90% chances of survival. And those 90% go down to 30% after 35 minutes. So every minute counts. So first of all, signal tracking. It could be zigzag or lines, depending on how many people are searching. So it's really important to know where you've last seen the victim and start the search from there, because you're not gonna go uphill. It's quite a big area and at this pace it better be precise because if you have to go back up it's tough. And these are small boulders. Oh, I'm stuck. Transceivers, rescue dogs, probing lines, record detection systems. If you're lucky enough and you have a rescue team show up, then great, but you should try to complete the rescue yourself and not expect anyone to come and help you. So it's really important for your group to be self-sufficient and you need to train for that. So once you found your victim with a probe and if you're several diggers, you could dig into a pyramid. So first one digs out next to the victim and the people behind push out the snow. Up, like this, you need to have a strong shovel, if possible metal shovel, because when you have a wet slide, the snow will be really hard very quickly. Push the snow downwards, always down the way. It's okay, he's safe. So being part of an avalanche is something that's incredibly scary, but which is part of free riding. So you need to be prepared, you need to embrace it because when an avalanche happens, you will be dependent on your friend and they will be dependent on you. So remember, train and have fun.